Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin by trimming down on the part count on our station. Currently our station is at how many parts? 423. And it's a 154 ton station, though that does include visiting vessels. So we're going to have Alan step out and pull some of the obsolete pieces off. And we're going to start with this side and try, I don't know if uh, we can scrap this tank or not, but uh, let's start off by pumping the water to some other location. Well, actually we're full of water all over the place, so hopefully we can dismantle it without uh, emptying the water, because I think uh, we're full up on water due to that glitch with the fuel cells. And so now that I've turned it off, I assume we're consuming water. It looks like it, it looks like it. All right, so Alan EVA. Okay, drill equipped. And off we go. After this, we will tackle a crew master test, I think. Um, let's take a quick look at what, what we've got queued up. There's a crew master A that can be launched in 28 days. I guess an Orpheus 2 to the station, the moonport station, or another Lunapod G test. I'll think about that. As far as our life support goes, we have 200 days on the surface of the moon, more than 200 days in orbit around the moon, and plenty up here at Spaceport 2. But that's because we have one less crew member inside right now. So we're mainly trying to material kit most of this stuff. So get ready for some explosions. I don't think Alan can carry a docking port. Yeah, no. Well, we'll just have to dismantle that one. It's gotta be a shame not having a docking port at this end, though. Maybe we can pick it up and like place it somewhere else temporarily. Well, I don't think I can move that docking port, so we're just gonna have to lose it and uh... Yeah, we'll just have no docking port on this end of the station. I mean, we, we can find other ways to dock stuff, I'm sure. Okay, well, we definitely don't need the controller unit. A hundred material kits, that's good. And... Yeah, we can get rid of some illuminators. Not many material kits from that. I wonder if the fuel tank is a lot of material kits. These solar panels that don't retract, definitely not necessary. Though I guess we could cheat and uh, they would be retracted when we put him in his inventory, right? So that's a way of retracting them. Let me let me just try that for a sec. If you grab it, you put him in... Uh, oh well. I really need to opt the volume. It can't fit. So, academic anyway for now. Okay, let's grab the dish. I don't know. Seems like something to save. There we go. We saved it. We, we can grab the antenna too. Because right now we don't get much value for disassembly, so... If we can grab it and put it into his inventory, we might, we might as well. Okay, and now let's try and dismantle this large container. It's got water in. I don't know if that gives us extra material kits or not, but here we go. 179.74 material kits. I don't think we need this uh, adapter piece either. It's just extra mass and an extra piece. Uh, if we want to, we could add another docking port to the actual crew module, so let's just assemb disassemble that. And it's pretty good, 159 units of material kits. That's good. Alright, um, we'll keep the ladder rungs, I suppose. This is now no longer autonomous, so... There's no way it can use its thrusters to push away from the station or anything like that. Let's grab what we can. It might be nice to reuse these one kilonewton thrusters. 
trouble with grabbing ports and thrusters like this is uh, we have to hope that we remember what kind of fuel they're configured to. In this case, Arizine and N204, but easy to forget if we suddenly start using a different mix of fuel. Okay, well, he's got no more slots here, unless we can stack the RCS thrusters. Nope. Okay, up to the KIS container. It is up there, right? Um, yes. Okay, so store, store. As far as why the soul panel array is disjointed, um, that I think is an infrared robotics issue, or at least an issue with these parts. But can't really say. Okay, another RCS port and another thruster. I'm just going to get rid of this fuel cell. 25 units of material kits and that fuel cell if we can. And these solar panels. Sort of unnecessary. Alright, now how many parts do we have on this? Oh, well, we can't check because... Wait, how heavy is the Kerbal? 0.36 tons with the suit. That's pretty darn heavy. Well, the suit and the supplies, I suppose. Okay, uh, on to the KIS container. You know, what we really needed was a vessel that could actually return this stuff to the surface, sort of like a dragon capsule kind of thing. Okay, am I that far away that I can't write? Okay, there we go. Guess I am. Uh, return all this stuff to the surface to like recycle them properly. Of course, not having to bring them up again is nice, but to some extent, it's hard to assemble. I mean, I guess slapping these on won't be too bad. That's why I picked them as the parts that we salvage, but... Still, it's harder to integrate them into designs. Okay, all done. Let's get back inside for now, and then we'll see what the part count is. Okay, all inside, and part count is 393. I mean, it's progress. We are below 400 now, and we'll do further spacewalks to clear more things up. But for now, I think uh, we'll leave that be. At least we got rid of the unsightly... Um, floaty bit on the station and uh, now I would like to put something on there because this sort of woodish texture or corkboard texture uh, doesn't really fit with everything else but what can we put there and how would we put it that's a good question for now I'll leave this be let us proceed with other activities Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've decided to try the Lunapod G again, this time with the situation a little bit better. Obviously, we have ladders now. Hold on, let me just double check. But uh, also, I moved the lander legs up. Okay, so we do have ladders, these mobility enhancers, and I've moved the landing legs up so it's a little bit more stable, and um, maybe a few other refinements, but basically we're going to try it again because those were the problems that we had and I think it's still much more efficient than the next best alternative so if, uh, if we have to go to the next alternative that's going to be a much less efficient system so I would rather have this work and yeah that's basically the story so here we go again uh, I'll just load the program into the Gemini capsule we're launching two Kerbals this time Gletris is a uh, pilot and Chagger is an engineer. They are both new and so our goal is to put Chagger on the station. We already have uh, uh, Kerbal engineer on the surface but we do need a pilot. I don't know if we strictly need a pilot actually but um, it's probably good to have a pilot. Anyway so let's just run VG21. And off we go. 
See, NASA should have made one of these. I mean, obviously. Only three engines involved. Much cheaper than a Saturn one, And much more capable, too. Of course, the downside to this particular system is the way we have to shut down one of the engines to keep the g-forces low otherwise if you run both engines simultaneously all the way through their burn you get to eight g's so that's not good and i don't think nasa would have been thrilled with the whole shutting one engine down thing not in this situation Different situation with Saturn V and shutting the first, uh, the center engine down. Okay, we have the single engine shutdown. Okay, seven seconds to shut down. And there we go. Separation and J2 ignition. Everything is looking fine so far. All right, and we are in orbit. Okay, all looking good. Time to transfer to the moon. Well, shucks, I just had uh, MechJab plotted for me, and it turns out we should get started right away. I don't know if this is a good idea or whether I should wait in orbit, but I'm impatient, so let's just make sure everything is stable. And go ahead. We intend to rendezvous with the station first anyway, so we have plenty of fuel. We'll refuel at the station and then proceed further. Okay, and... Well, it's out anyway. Okay. Separation. Okay. Unfortunately, the other stage is still... RCSing at us, so oh, and we can't control it. All right, well, fine. Uh, okay, well, it's gonna give us a little bit of an extra push temporarily. Hopefully, not slam at us. I really should throw down before separating next time. Hmm, gotta admit the game's a little bit sticky. I should probably get rid of some of the older craft again. Okay, well, since the RCS is not going to be enough to pull away, I suppose it is time to... Well, igniting this is an annoying thing to have to do. I suppose we could sidestep a bit, maybe? Hmm. This isn't helping our situation, honestly. Uh, right. That's not good. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So this time I also put radiators on this uh, capture stage, the stage that's supposed to bring us into orbit around the moon. I'm trying to save an ignition on it right now, though that's not strictly necessary because it does have four ignitions. But then again, if I ignite it, it's still not going to be overly precise about doing a mere 20 meter per second burn. It's not as efficient, but we have a lot of extra fuel in this engine, so it'll be more convenient. Also, I put some more powerful thrusters on to help with control. I don't know if they're going to be enough, but that is one improvement. Judging from the recharge rate, we might be able to get away with uh, smaller smaller electric, uh, solar panels. We could probably get a little bit lighter on the solar panels. The solar panels aren't particularly heavy in the first place. Make sure the fuel is all right. It is. And ignition. Okay, that'll do. All right, uh, excellent approach to the moon. Let's get into lunar SOI. Okay. Well, we have arrived in Lunar SOI, and we certainly have enough Delta V in this stage for the planned burn, but it occurs to me that if I'm going to put radiators on a thing, I should probably activate them. 
that might be helpful. So we did have oxygen boil off, but it's not going to hinder our situation at all. But why don't we get those on now so it doesn't do any worse. As we approach our maneuver at periapsis. Hopefully there's some more ambitious base contract available. We probably need one of those. Our current base is not all that great, but it'd be nice to be paid to create a better base. Especially since the USI base modules are pretty darn expensive. Okay, let's just double check. All right, very stable. Ignition. Ah, we have RD58 series engine failure. Well, okay, let's throw all down. Well, that sucks. And unfortunately, uh, we aren't allowed to send... Oh, we haven't uh, gotten rid of the nose cone yet, by the way. Um, yeah, we can't just send our engineer out to fix it or something. That'd be nice. But, well, this is a useless stage now. Separate. And... Our nose cone comes back to bonk us. Yes. Okay, so Gemini lander engines, I guess. And we have to unlock these fuels. Oh, there might be a little error due to the fact that I started the engines by a staging but hadn't unlocked these fuels yet. Okay, well, our timing is rather a bit off now and our node is somewhere completely different. So this sucks, but let's just get on with it. And nose cone takes out... Wait a minute. I accept that the nose cone could take out that solar panel. But but what's with taking out that one? It definitely did not collide with that one. Well, good thing we plan to head to the spaceport, the moon port, anyway. And we were going to refuel anyway, so... We can't correct all the inclination because we missed the timing on the original burn. So let's just shut it down there and do some corrections. Yeah, we'll just do some additional corrections like uh, maneuver here. Um, on two solar panels, well, we'll have to see whether we have enough power. We certainly don't have great balance, but okay, yeah, we do have enough power. So we have margin there, lots of margin in fact. To have half of your solar panels gone and still be able to recharge just fine is quite a lot of margin. I wonder if the mass is still registered at those locations because of these little nubs. I don't know how the mass of the solar panels works. We seem to need a little bit of pitch to balance things out, so perhaps we're not perfectly balanced right now. I hope we have enough fuel stores on the station in order to refuel this. That's another thing, if we use a larger pod, which might be sturdier, it also means that we need more fuel to refuel it each time, and that's, that's an inconvenience. My hope had been, of course, that the RD-58 stage would be able to handle all of these major uh, maneuvers to rendezvous with the station, but since it decided to quit on us with only having done the mid-course adjustment burn, we couldn't do that. Okay, trying to get this done quickly here. Not great at the quick dockings in Realism Overhaul, but I think we've got connection. And yes, we are docked. Alright, so let's get refueling. And we'll have to wait a little bit until the surface base is at the right location to descend down to it. And right now, uh, it might be a while, unfortunately. We're past it. It'll, we'll have to wait until it's over on this side, and that's in the dark. Maybe we'll hang out a bit and 
assess the situation since we've lost two solar panels. Anyway, I'll come back with you with the decision. All right, I've decided to try and bring it down in the dark. I've made sure to refuel it, and we don't have a huge amount of supplies as far as food, water, and oxygen, but I've moved one of the Kerbals out. Only the pilot is going down, the engineer is at the station, and so we have two engineers at the station now. And uh, we'll try and bring whoever's at the base up, and maybe uh, the current occupant of this, uh, Gletris, will uh, just uh, man, the, or woman, woman, I think, the surface station on her own. That's an odd image right now. Yep, can't really tell. All right, so. Yeah, we do have two messed up. I wonder if it's possible for an engineer to repair them. I doubt it. Hmm. We don't have anything like spare parts, do we? Well, anyway, let's see. Before we leave, let's just get Megan Kerman, one of our engineers over there. Megan has drill, needs to equip it though. Just says disassemble. Wait. No. What does no damage mean? I mean, that's sort of wishful thinking, right? No. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Nope, I'm pretty sure it's uh, useless. I suppose we could take it off and place a replacement on. I know somebody mentioned that I should send scientists over, and I really should, but we're still sort of getting things set up, I feel. Once we've got a reliable system to get people into lower orbit, and, well, lower orbit is easy, but. Uh, transfer people over and get them to the surface and everything. We'll focus on the science portion of all this. For now, we have not done so. Okay. So let us just proceed, undock. We are trying to land on at night at the base, which isn't great for the electric charge. But this pod will come straight back up after landing, is the intention. Okay, now we have a nice close approach. 500, well, 500 meters so far. Maybe we can do a little bit more on that. It's not my intention to connect this to the base, but it'd be nice just to demonstrate that we could if we wanted to. Okay, we have landed. We're 59, well, that says 63, but that's the actual base. So 59 meters from the base, and a little bit further out than I would have wanted. But we still have enough fuel to get back to orbit, so that is good. Alright, so let's hope it remains more stable than the other ones. Let's start by getting crew from the base to here and then move Gletris out. So not this, yeah, that. Felipe Kerman hasn't really stayed here for very long. I don't know if we want to move Bill out, but Bill has been around for a while. Hmm. Well, Felipe had a short stay down here at the base. It was a hectic one too. Let's have Felipe go ahead. I mean, Bill can... Well, we need to send something to contain material kits down here because Bill can go around scrapping all the other Luna pods. That would be helpful. Okay, let's see if the ladders work. They stretch high enough for the Kerbal to get in safely without toppling something. No, it doesn't say board. Dang it. Board. 
Okay, good. Not really, as... I mean, the thing is, I don't want to obstruct a hatch, and I can't really see where the hatch is. I mean, this whole thing is technically the hatch. So, yeah. I guess the hatch is actually this location here. But it's tough to say. Okay, yeah. I think uh, Gletris might might just skip the opportunity to stay at the moon base for now. We have too many pilots around the moon anyway. We, we, we really need to get a scientist at the base rather than another pilot. After all, what are pilots going to do at the base, really? So let's try and get this back to the station to demonstrate the full capabilities of this for the first time. Yay. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. And we're ready to go. Let's check our food, water, and oxygen. We've got a day's worth and 18, well, 15 hours, we'll say, for the two crew members of this pod. That's fine. Yep. So finally, Luna Pod did its thing, and that's a relief. I mean, we still had mishaps, obviously. We had test flight kill one of our engines. We had uh, nose cone kill two of our solar panel arrays. And yet, still managed to uh, get to the surface safely and finally pick up a Kerbal and hopefully get back to the station. Okay, let's stop it there for now. And we have 473 meters per second left for rendezvous. Uh, I'm just taking the distance to target and it seems like this is about half, so it'll take us two orbits to rendezvous, hopefully. Mm, right now we don't have a tangency though, so... Maybe three orbits. Okay, we are aiming to match speeds with the station and dock. We have 339 meters per second left. So everything seems to be going well. Electric charge is a bit tight though. The reason we had four solar panels is clearly because of the power drain during the nighttime side and the need to make up for it on the daylight side of the moon. Okay, I think we're docked and that's the fastest I've brought one of these pods in so far. But there we are. So completed mission, crew transfer with the Luna pod. So the Luna pod works, sort of. Uh, we could do with a little bit of refinement as far as maybe we could replace the RD-58 with something else. That would be a good start. Something a little bit more reliable. We've had multiple problems with the RD-58 so far. Maybe some other stage would be preferable. But of course it has to be able to, you know, maintain on the way to the moon. You know, not too much boil off. But then again we have the radiators. Maybe that'll solve the boil off problem. Should, right? So, but the other thing is, uh, it has to be, it has to be, uh, cheap because we're going to dispose of it, but maybe we shouldn't dispose of it at all. You know, maybe we should just carry, uh, carry the Luna pod along with the transfer demon. I don't know, but the transfer demon has an Apollo docking system on the top. The Luna pod only has, uh propellant only docking system may there should be a separate tug for lunapod i don't know it's it's complicated because it's such a tug yeah it's weird i'll th i'll rethink the system but anyway at least this part sort of works so we've got that going for us let's turn to the shuttle the crew master okay so here we are with uh, another test of the crew master system uncrewed of course, and we will see how it goes. It does have a good recovery rate as far as the crew cabin is concerned, but of course uh, a large part of the point was to make sure that those candle nuclear the uh, RTG engines come back, so that's very important. Alright, so run crew master.
We're getting closer, but still, we want to land at Cape Canaveral. It'd be nice to use Kerbal Constructs to have alternate runways all over the place, but I don't think it works very well in 1.1.3. It works better in uh, KSP 1.2.2. In 1.1.3, I don't think Kerbal Constructs is as good with real solar system as it is in 1.2.2. I think they had a fix or something. Okay, two of the engines on the booster have shut down. That's to limit G-forces and also aid in balance. Okay. We have separation of the booster, temporary lack of avionics, which wouldn't happen if there were crew, uh, there was crew in the pod. The Thor avionics unit can handle 65 tons, but that's not including the crew capacity, uh, the um, control capacity of the Mark II cockpit, which isn't being added in right now. Okay, well, the stage has concluded and it's going to deorbit as planned, so separate and ignition of the RTG engines. And we'll wait to, till we get to Apoapsis to run those. So, what we learned from the previous test is that we really need to keep an eye on the, on the fuel up front here, and we will need to replenish it during re entry in order to make sure that uh, it doesn't go all crazy again. And I think it's because we've got a decoupler here, right? It thinks it's separate, but it shouldn't act separate. I don't know if the decoupler has a setting on it that causes that. Enable crossfeed. Well, that sounds about right. Yep, okay. So, enabling crossfeed there solves the problem, I think. So, we might be okay. Let's find out. Making orbit. Well, might as well get the radiators active. Okay, so with a little bit of extra effort, we are in orbit. Now let's uh, get to a higher periapsis in preparation for the re-entry test. And so I want an orbital period around an hour and a half will do. And we'll wait in orbit for a day. Alright, the re-entry script is activated. And I've changed the target periapsis from 0 to 10,000. Because I believe last time we were falling short of the target of Cape Canaveral. And it's just a random choice of 10,000. The question is whether that will be good enough for it to uh, be able to make the necessary adjustments. Okay. That's the end of the retro burn, and we'll see how it handles. Of course, with this system, the RCS system doesn't use the same fuel as the OMS system. So this 582 meters per second has nothing to do with how much RCS fuel we have. It's still rolling around a bit. We are in the atmosphere now. I really wish it would settle down. But we've already used a lot of RCS now to just uh, orient properly. So that's something to watch out for, especially since we have 80 units of it locked up front here. This will be a whole lot easier when we do get to use liquid uh, hydrogen, well, hydrogen gas thrusters instead of what we've got now. But I didn't want to change this to hydrogen gas thrusters even though that'd be more convenient because that entails checking out the balance of everything again. Hydrogen just isn't as dense as uh, Arizine and N204 and so the balance would probably be off and in the worst case scenario we'd probably have to move the canards somehow oh we have some overheating of the tail tank again that seems quite ablative I need to fix that again it shouldn't throw anything off but yep uh, we do have an ablative tail tank right now and that's not acceptable Okay, well, we are at 77,500 meters, and we have not reached North America yet, so I'm a little bit concerned we're falling short still. 
Yep, uh, we should probably set the target periapsis higher than 10,000 it looks like. Okay, we've caught some lift up to 82 kilometers, but it's peaking out at this point as we pass over Baja, California. And we've still got a ways to go, about 3,000 kilometers, a little bit more than 3,000 kilometers, before we reach Cape Canaveral. So uh, soon we'll reach our peak, probably close to 83 kilometers before going back down again. Nothing else has blown up so far. Okay, we have made it to the Gulf of Mexico now, and we are still at 68 kilometers, now gaining a little bit of lift again. And th that might carry us all the way to Florida, we'll see. Still a ways to go. Currently the, the script is projecting that we'll fall short, but that's based on the shuttle and dinosaur, so no guarantees with the aerodynamics of this that it's really doing the right thing. Uh, now it's hit the, the right location at the right time, so it's pitching up again. Perhaps not quickly enough though. Uh-oh, we have lost control again. Oh, shoot. That is because we ran out of fuel that's unlocked right now. Uh, let's see if uh, unlocking it... Dang it, same sort of problem. Uh, I've unlocked the remaining fuel. We really need to switch to hydrogen gas thrusters. We just we aren't carrying enough RCS fuel otherwise. Or we should carry more RCS fuel. I don't think it can recover itself once it's lost it's, uh, lost a grip on the right position. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just physically all right. Uh, it's just a matter of running out of fuel to uh, hold our orientation, which is sort of important. Ooh. Well, let me have it stop that. Uh, I don't think I have an autopilot assistant in here, so that's not going to work. Serious G-forces, much spinning. Let me take off the RCS thrusters at this point. Yeah, not great. Uh, where are we? Still short. So maybe 20 kilometers on that. Or actually, you know what? That sound is so annoying, I'll just pass on dumping the liquid hydrogen. It'll be fine. So yeah, I, I don't think we need as much delta V as we're carrying for the liquid hydrogen thrusters. We do want to be able to rendezvous with things, but still. We're, we're carrying an extra load of 556 meters per second here, which we don't need to do. The additional delta V you see is from the escape system, and we're just going to not count that. Okay, well, I once again don't exactly know the stall speed of this, especially at its current weight. And... do we have all four engines? That's what I want. Come on, game. Tell me. Verdict, please. Oh, it's leaving us in suspense. Okay, we've got all four engines. In fact, did anything actually break off during impact? Radiator panel. And a solid rocket motor. One of the escape system motors. Yeah, one of the escape system motors broke off. And somehow the two radiator panels on the top of the vehicle broke off which takes some extra talent in this situation, but otherwise uh, the most valuable part of this system remained intact, so that's good. And we still need to develop a little bit more on this. Maybe I should just go to hydrogen gas thrusters. After all, we had plenty of fuel. It was just not the right kind of fuel in this case. Uh, we could have just been using the liquid hydrogen. Of course, the liquid hydrogen as a cold gas thruster is not as efficient as the Arizean N204, but that's sort of academic when the Arizean N204 runs out. 
So, yeah, I'll have to think about that. Anyway, uh, we can at least recover this and not lose all of our money. And we will uh, live to test another day. So anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.